Chicago, 1871. It was a toddling town, a city of big shoulders and even bigger dreams. People came to seek their fortunes. Houses sprang up as fast as building materials could be found. Chicago was unstoppable until... Mrs. O'Leary's cow, Daisy, kicked over a lantern and started the Great Chicago Fire. Mrs. O'Leary's house is long gone, and today, this fire academy stands on the spot where the old house and barn used to be. It's a good reminder that you can't be too careful around fire and the equipment that makes it. Welcome to this National Roofing Contractors Association's Certified Roofing Torch Applicator video on torch handling safety. Today, we're going to look at some basic safety procedures and precautions for using torching equipment. Keeping in mind our motto, roofing is what we do, safely is how we do it, let's get started. An open flame is tricky. It can be a helpful tool or cause terrible damage and injury. Safety is everyone's responsibility. If you're not sure about something on a job site, ask your foreman or supervisor. There are no dumb questions when it comes to safety, especially torching safety. Anyone who plans to use a torch must be properly trained and certified. Wear PPE if you plan to use a torch or work with hot bitumen. Hot bitumen will stick to your skin and cause severe burns. Protect yourself by wearing a long sleeve shirt buttoned at the neck and cuffs. Wear long pants without cuffs that reach down over the tops of your work boots. Cuffs can catch hot bitumen and burn you. Boots should be ankle high and have solid rubber soles. Wear heavy leather gloves with snug-fitting cuffs to protect your hands. And if there's a possibility of danger from above, wear a hard hat. Goggles or a face shield will protect your eyes from heat flashes and bitumen spatters. Burns from torching jobs and propane freezes are the most common kinds of burn injuries. So it's important for you to know what to do in a medical emergency. If someone gets burned, call immediately for an ambulance. While you wait for professional assistance, irrigate or bathe the burned area in cool water. Do not apply antiseptic, salves, or lotions of any kind. Also, don't try to remove any clothing or bitumen that may be stuck to a burn or wound. This is best done at the hospital. If possible, help the injured person move to a shaded area or air-conditioned room away from the sun. You've probably seen one of these before. Anytime you use torching equipment, there must be a minimum of two 4A60 BC rated fire extinguishers within 10 feet of where you work. The contents of a fire extinguisher are under great pressure so it's very important not to expose a fire extinguisher to any open flame or heat. Fire extinguishers must be thoroughly inspected every year and recharged after each use. Always check the gauge and inspection tag. If the tag shows inspection within the past year and the gauge reads charged, then the extinguisher is ready. To help you remember how to properly operate a fire extinguisher, use the pass system. First, pull the pin. Then, from a safe distance, aim the nozzle at the base of the fire. Squeeze the handle and sweep the stream from side to side to cover the entire area. Remember, that's pass, pull, aim, squeeze, sweep. Even if you're able to put out a fire, immediately call the fire department. Make sure they know you're reporting a fire involving propane gas. Always call the professionals.
For every job that involves torching, a daily inspection should be performed by the foreman or supervisor. A daily checklist to help identify all potential hazards should be used. A daily checklist should include all the hazards you learned about in Section 1 of your student manual. Supervisors need to be aware of local fire codes and safety regulations and make sure their crews comply with those rules. Inspect daily with the building owner or representatives for conditions that might present hazards during torching operations, such as flammable materials stored under the roof deck or adjacent to the building. Inspect the underside of the roof deck or the building's attic space. Combustible or flammable materials should be stored a minimum of 20 feet from torching work. Keep the job site clear of loose trash and debris. On a windy day, loose debris can blow into an open flame and start a fire. Prohibit smoking on job sites, especially where there is propane gas. It's just too dangerous. Make sure appropriate fall protection is properly set up. Plan your work so you can move tanks easily and keep hoses untangled. Never use a hose to pull a tank. Propane gas is heavier than air, so it can collect or pool in low or poorly ventilated areas. You may need to set up fans in these areas to properly ventilate them. On a windy day, it's difficult to control a torch flame. It's safer to work with smaller pieces of membrane. If it's too windy, you may simply have to stop torching. On bright days, be aware that an open flame is especially hard to see. Increase the distance between the torch flame and hazardous areas and other workers. Post the phone number of the local fire department near the roof access point. Everyone should know the location of the closest telephone or a working cell phone with a fully charged battery. Program the local fire department's phone number into the cell phone before the job starts. If the field of a roof has a plywood, wood plank, oriented strand board, also called OSB, or wood fiber board deck or substrate, it must be protected by a thermal barrier, such as gypsum board or other approved insulation. Never torch directly to a combustible substrate. A daily inspection should identify dangerous conditions and combustible areas before torching starts. These include window sills, door thresholds, wood siding, HVAC and utility pipes or conduits, air intakes, vents, skylights, drains, and scuppers. Watch for other hidden hazards such as flammable vapors or gases from air vents and exhaust fans, combustible materials under counter flashings and copings, and lint, sawdust, or grease inside mechanical equipment. Roof edges also present unseen hazards. A flame can wrap around an edge and get sucked into the building. Schedule regular inspections throughout each workday to identify changing conditions like materials being stored against the underside of the roof deck. Include a close watch inside a building's attic if the underside of the roof deck is not exposed. Most roofing torches are fueled by propane, which is extremely flammable. Propane is kept under high pressure in a steel cylinder. If a steel cylinder is damaged, it could explode. Carefully inspect valves, cylinders, pressure regulators, torches, torching trolleys, and hoses and connections for damage. All hand torches have a burner head, leg stand, neck tube, pilot control valve, trigger, handle, and inlet connection. A torch should have a leg stand that directs the flame away from the roof surface when the torch is temporarily set down. Torching trolleys speed up production when installing field plies. You'll learn how to operate them later in this program. One of the most important components in a torch assembly is the pressure regulator. It safely controls the flow of pressurized gas. Keep the vent hole clear of dirt and debris. Read the manufacturer's instructions to make sure the regulator you're using matches the torch. 
Some regulators increase the pressure when turned clockwise and others decrease pressure. Adjustable regulators typically have a pressure gauge that reads the pressure level. Regulators without pressure gauges are typically manufactured at a preset pressure. Know how your torch's regulator works. Now let's talk about hoses and connections. Test all connections and couplings for leaks with a soapy water solution. If you see bubbles at any of these points, you've got a leak and a potentially serious problem. Tag the damaged hose and take it out of service. Also, keep hose lengths as short as possible, with no more than two couple sections not exceeding 30 feet altogether between the cylinder and your torch. It will be easier and safer to move around as you work. There are two types of propane systems used in roofing work, vapor withdrawal and liquid withdrawal systems. You can learn more about liquid withdrawal systems in your student manual. Most torches used in roofing equipment employ the vapor withdrawal system. Sometimes frost forms on a propane tank. If this happens, change to a smaller torch or a larger tank and never turn the tank on its side or use a torch to melt the frost. Keep propane cylinders at least 10 feet away from any open flame and at least 6 feet away from roof edges, walls, or openings. Also, don't store propane cylinders near buildings, sidewalks, or public areas. Check the local fire codes for more information. Store cylinders upright and grouped together. Secure them around the middle with a chain, wire, rope, or ratchet strap. Before you have a cylinder refilled, check it for damage. If any part of the cylinder is damaged, tag it, remove it from service, and tell your supervisor. Now, let's talk about using torching equipment. First, make sure the propane tank is at least 10 feet away and two fully charged 4A60BC rated fire extinguishers are within 10 feet of where you will be torching. Make sure you have the materials you'll work with nearby. That way you won't have to leave your torch unattended to go and get them. Wear proper PPE. Check that all valves are closed and all hoses and connections have been tested for leaks. When you're ready, slowly open the valve on the tank. The valve should be open completely when the system is being operated. Hold the torch in one hand and point the mouth away from your body, the hoses, and tanks. Now open the pilot control knob to its lowest setting. This allows the smallest amount of gas to escape. Position the spark lighter near the torch mouth so you can strike it as you open the pilot knob. Two notes of caution here. Never use matches or a cigarette lighter to light a torch. They could explode in your hand. Plus, you can't count on being able to hear the sound of the gas flow before you strike the lighter. Carefully use your spark lighter to ignite the gas. Adjust the pilot flame so it burns steadily. Then test the torch by opening and closing the hand lever. To light a multi-head torching trolley or dragon wagon, slowly open the pilot control knob. Allow a small amount of gas into the system. Light the torch head with a spark lighter. Light each individual torch head the same way, being careful not to reach across those already lit. You can also use a lit torch and pass it in front of the torch heads. Be sure to keep your hands, face, feet and clothing clear of the flames. Now let's talk about some important precautions that can help make torch applied roofing as safe as possible. Before you begin torching on any area of a roof, make sure plywood, wood plank, OSB, wood fiberboard or other combustible substrates or hazards have been identified and properly prepared. You may need to install an approved thermal barrier insulation before you torch in the field of a roof. If you're not able to identify the type of substrate or you suspect something is a hazard, then assume it can burn and follow the safety practices outlined in this program. The application should comply with the system manufacturer's requirements, plus recommendations in the current NRCA roofing and waterproofing manual. If a roof flashing contains wood plank, plywood, 
OSB, or wood fiberboard components, such as cant strips, an air impermeable backer ply should be installed with seal laps. Air impermeable means the backer ply will not let air pass through it. You must ensure the laps are tightly sealed so no air can pass around or through the lap joints. If air can pass through a base ply, then an open flame can also pass through or around and start a fire. Details for acceptable backer ply configurations can be found in your student manual. Backer ply applications should also comply with the system manufacturer's specifications. Once you are sure all hazards are protected, direct torching of the finished flashing sheets may be done using small detail sized torches operating at no greater than 105,000 BTUs. If adjacent building components like window sills, wood siding, or air intakes are present, protect these areas from open flames using a non-flammable covering such as a fire blanket or additional thermal barrier. Never point a torch flame directly at roof openings and penetrations, like exhaust vents and expansion joint curbs, or any area you cannot clearly see. A flame could be drawn into hidden openings and ignite unseen combustible or flammable materials or substrates. Grease traps, dust collectors, and lint traps, or rooftop equipment such as air conditioning units, should always be checked before torching work begins. Work with the building owner to clean these areas of combustible materials and debris. And never point a torch flame directly at or into one of these units. Roof edges are another hazard to consider when torching. A torch flame can wrap around a roof edge and be drawn into the building. There are other areas and materials that should never come in contact with an open flame, including wood and fiber cant strips, wires and electrical conduit, natural gas lines, and oils or chemicals. Use the torch and flop method when you install roofing around any of these areas. First, pre-cut and dry fit the modified bitumen in place. Then, set the membrane upside down over a non-combustible thermal barrier. Heat the modified bitumen by pointing the flame directly to the underside of the piece until evenly and thoroughly heated. Finally, flop the heated membrane and press into place. If you're using the torch and flop technique on a windy day, it's safest to work with smaller pieces of membrane. If you're starting or ending a roll near a roof edge, wall, or penetration, roll the material back dry and then cut to fit. Fold the sheet back, thoroughly heat the underside of the membrane, and then flop it into place. Never leave a lit torch unattended. If you need to step away from the torch, this is how to do it. Rest the torch on its stand, pointing away from any walls, projections, and roofing materials. Never use a torch with a missing or defective torch stand. Make sure the torch hose is not tangled or the torch could flip over and ignite the substrate. And be aware of torches that have been set down. Make sure others around you know you're using a torch. Here are a few other safety do's and don'ts. Never use a torch to warm, clean, or dry any part of an exposed wood plank, plywood, OSB, or wood fiberboard substrate. And if you're using a torch on a roof to heat other roofing equipment, such as hot luggers, pipes, or felt layers, be careful not to allow an open flame to come in contact with any combustible materials. When you're finished using a torch, bleed out the remaining gas in the lines. To do this, First, close the valve on the propane tank. Squeeze the torch handle to release the excess gas. Now, close the pilot and regulator valves. Store torches in a secure lockup overnight. When you're ready to put the torch away, check the manufacturer's instructions for dismantling it. A fire watch is a specially trained person who detects hot spots during and after application of torch applied roofing systems. In addition to keeping a watch throughout the day, he must continue monitoring the job for at least two hours after all torches have been turned off and all equipment and tools have been stored.
Depending on weather conditions, roof and building design, and adjoining materials, the fire watch duty could take longer. The fire watch inspects all areas of the roof, including below the roof deck and attic areas. He also checks that the propane cylinders are turned off and properly secured in a safe place. An infrared heat sensing thermometer is often used to detect hot spots around skylights, exhaust vents, grease traps, and below the deck. Did Mrs. O'Leary's cow Daisy really start the Great Chicago Fire? We'll probably never know for sure, but there is something we can be certain of. Any flame is a potential hazard. But if you are careful and follow basic safety precautions, you can harness the power of fire and heat to help you build homes and buildings that will last. Remember, roofing is what we do. Safely is how we do it.